If you have the ability to repair and recouple your own fire hose, you can make this prop in as little as 10 minutes. What you're going to need is a scrap piece of inch and a half or inch and three quarter hose that you can cut into two sections nine inches long. On each of these sections you're going to place a male and female coupling. Along with the holes, you're going to need a piece of one and a quarter inch thin wall PVC drain pipe 18 inches long. This is an insert for the holes that adds rigidity to simulate a charged line. Finally, to top off the prop, you can use an old fog or smoothbore nozzle. Once assembled, the prop recreates a 100 foot length of holes or two 50 foot sections. This gives you a scaled down model that's less than 30 inches long. So you only need to assemble the prop once, as the overall length makes it extremely easy to store, transport, and use for tabletop training. In this video, I want to talk about how couplings on a hose line can be used as directional indicators. Now this isn't anything new. In fact, this is a technique that's been taught for many, many years and has literally been passed down from one generation of firefighter to the next. Most veteran firefighters are very familiar with this already, but unfortunately I've come across recruiting new firefighters all the time that haven't been taught this technique yet. So I want to use this video as both a review as well as an introduction. Now first things first, it's important for us as firefighters to realize that getting lost and disorientated inside a structure fire is a real and significant danger. Let's face it, we're typically making entry into an unfamiliar building that's charged with smoke, so visibility is limited at best, and things can go wrong. Now obviously prevention is paramount, and that's where we need to start. And it begins with a good size up, and identifying our entry and egress points on the exterior, and maintaining good situational awareness while we're on the interior. But realize that prevention only goes so far, and when something bad happens, we need to be able to react. And when it does, I always like to say you should have a plan A, plan B, plan C, and even a plan D. The reality is this, is that many line of duty deaths have occurred where firefighters have gotten lost and disorientated and have died within feet of a window, a door, a stairwell, or even a hose line that could have led them to safety. Now I want to share a short story with you guys. Many years ago, my, when my dad was on the job, he was in charge of a fire where two of his friends and fellow firefighters got lost and disorientated and died in the basement of a restaurant fire. They pulled up to this incident in the middle of a wedding reception. Uh, fire was reported in a small storage room in the basement. The building was in the process of being evacuated. Uh, the team made entry to locate the origin of the fire. They had moderate conditions, decent visibility, and while searching for the seat, the fire broke out on them and conditions rapidly deteriorated. They lost reference and orientation to their exit and egress point and never made it out. If you can find a holes line and you follow it, it can lead you out of the building. The key is that you follow it correctly. The first technique I want to go through is how to locate the closest couplings. The mindset here is the faster that you can locate a coupling set and identify direction, the quicker you're going to get out of the building. If you come across a holes line and you're right in the middle of a section, you're going to be 25 feet away from a coupling set. So which way you go, either left or right, is literally going to be a horse apiece. However, if you come across the holes, and let's say you're only 5 or 10 feet away from a set of couplings, but you can't see them because of smoke conditions, and they're just out of your reach, you're potentially only 1 to 2 seconds away from being able to confirm which way is out. Now, if I go the opposite way, I'm 40 to 45 feet away before I can determine my exit direction. And that's significant depending on conditions, especially if you went in the wrong direction to begin with. At that point, you're going to be going 80 to 90 feet out of your way. Now, to help avoid this and to identify the closest set of couplings, you can pick the holes up and drop them. What you're listening for is the couplings impacting the floor. Now, this works best on concrete, tile, and wood, but it'll also work on carpet if you're close enough to the couplings. If you didn't hear it the first time, you can pick the holes up again, a little higher this time, and drop it with a little more force. Once you hear the couplings, you can go in that direction, locate them, and start your assessment. To understand how a coupling set can act as a directional indicator, we need to review each coupling individually. 
when we look at the female coupling, it's comprised of two components. The swivel has little spanner lugs that obviously allow it to connect to the male coupling, as well as the discharge gate of the engine or pumper. You also have the shank, which connects the coupling to the hose itself. On the female, the shank is smooth. Now you may have a center rib that runs the circumference, but there are no spanner lugs on the shank of the female. Looking at the male, it's a single piece. The threads, as we know, connect to the female and eventually the nozzle. What's different on the male coupling, though, is that the spanner lugs are bigger and run the entire length of the shank. When you connect both sections together, you can take the characteristics of each coupling and use them as a directional indicator. Now, the best way to remember this is through a mnemonic. If you've never heard of it before, a mnemonic is a memory aid. Basically, it's a phrase or series of words that may rhyme, or at minimum, have a nice, easy flow that allow you to remember a technique or a procedure. Now, one mnemonic I like is little to big, back to the rig. And what that means is if I come across the little spanner lugs of the female coupling first, and then the big spanner lugs of the male coupling, that's going to lead me back to the rig or out of the building. Now, a good mnemonic is multi-directional. In other words, if I'm following the holes the opposite way, I want something that's going to indicate the opposing direction. And the opposite of little to big is big to little leads to the middle. In other words, if I come across the big spanner lugs of the male coupling first, then the little spanner lugs of the female, that's going to lead to the middle or deeper into the building. Now, it's a good technique, but one problem with little to big or big to little is that sometimes when you connect the hoses together, the spanner lugs can end up being directly in line. Now, it's rare for this to happen, but if it does, and you're really stressed out, you're in a very anxious situation, you have your big, bulky firefighting gloves on, it can be difficult to differentiate which spanner lug is which when they're directly in line. So another mnemonic is smooth sailing, rough road ahead. And what that means is if I come across the smooth shank of the female coupling first, that's smooth sailing, I'm heading out of the building. If I come across the spanner lugs first, or rough first, that's rough road ahead. And what's nice about that technique is it doesn't matter. You don't have to differentiate which spanner lug is first. If you feel a rough spanner lug to begin with, then you know it's rough road ahead. To sum up, in the end, decide what you like and what works best for you and practice it to the point where it's ingrained in your memory and it's automatic and instinctive. If you have the ability, put together a prop. Take it off the shelf from time to time. Review it with your veterans. Definitely teach it to your new recruits. It's a technique that just may save their life. See you next time.